Hi, I'm Scott Engel, Managing Director of RotoExperts.com. I am the king. I am fantasy. And joining me today in the Royal Kingdom is my good buddy, Nabate Isles. And we're going to talk about waiver pickups for week five. Mm -hmm. Nabate, you're going to lead this week. And tell me who you like in every position. Why don't we start at quarterback? At quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick of the Buffalo Bills. What is your take on the uh, last two weeks? He's had some great, great numbers. Well, you know, they're having to throw a lot because most teams, when they defend uh, the Buffalo Bills, they're expecting the run. So Ryan Fitzpatrick uh, has some experience, and he has to throw the ball to keep defenses honest. And he's doing a pretty good job of it. Look, if you're desperate, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, why do you recommend Fitzpatrick? Uh, the rushing yards, actually. He's had a couple of rushing touchdowns, and he shows that he can uh, move as well as throw. And... And, of course, like you said, with the Buffalo Bills trailing in games, they have to throw the football to try to get back into, you know, have the, the illusion of coming back in games. So, But Ryan Fitzpatrick definitely, and, and in the confidence that his receivers have in him, actually, because you saw some flashes last year with Fitzpatrick. Okay, uh, moving on. Oh, moving Matt, on. Matthew Stafford, you got some news about him. Yes, uh, Matthew Stafford, they're going to test his uh, shoulder out heavily in practice. He will practice with the team this week. And uh, and they're not ruling out a possible week five start, which is this Sunday. Yeah, some people might have been uh, quick to pull the trigger and cut Stafford because they didn't want to wait to him come back. What do you foresee for him as far as pumping life into the passing? Well, Sean Hill has pumped life into the passing game already, but Stafford is the future of this team. What do you see from Stafford when he comes back? I see an improvement uh, definitely with Megatron's productions with Calvin Johnson, uh, but Matthew Stafford, with him, he gets the ball. He can throw it wherever he needs to, to throw it to. And another thing as well, there's a Week 7 bye coming up for the Lions. So, I think after week seven, he will truly, his shoulder will be strong and he will truly be effective, but it's good to stash him right now when you have the time. So All right, chance. moving on at quarterback, talk about another passer. Oh, another passer, Bruce Gradkowski of the Raiders. Wow, journeyman. Uh, but, you know, Gradkowski's putting up the numbers. Uh, Gradkowski, you know, we've talked about this before. When a guy comes in, and just because he hasn't played a lot, you can't assume that he's not going to get the job done when he spent like about five years on the bench learning on the sidelines. There's no uh, substitute for experience. When a veteran quarterback comes in off the, from the sidelines, mm -hmm. Nabate, he can get the job done. Uh-huh, a la Rich Gannon. I mean, I'm not saying he's going to be Rich Gannon, but... Uh, I call it the Rodney Pete rule Rodney myself. Rodney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely, but Gradkowski, the thing that's really good for him is that he has a great rapport with Lewis Murphy. Also, uh, Darius Haywood Bay as well is getting better little by little. I think the second half of the season, Gratkowski could could definitely uh, help out fantasy squads, especially in two quarterback leagues. Uh, I wouldn't touch Darius Haywood Bay in like a only Raider league. Yeah. <laughs> but for Gratkowski, you know, if he if he can if he can convert some targets, you know, for Gratkowski, it's a good thing. Okay, moving on to running back. Now the running back position, Mike Bell with the injury of Lashawn McCoy. Well, you know, there's been rumors about a trade of Marshawn Lynch. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Mike Bell. Uh, he, he is a physical runner. Just but Opportunity doesn't always lead to production. I'm not seeing Bell there. Maybe Eldra Buckley. Uh, you know, that's a name mm -hmm. that a fantasy players can think about. He's more of a scat back than Bell is. The two of them can share carries, but I think Eldra Buckley probably has the better uh, possibility for some upside there. Why do you like Mike Bell? Oh, goal line. Goal line opportunities. And Leonard Weaver, is uh, his career is possibly over. So uh, Mike Bell, with him being healthy, he's going to be the goal line back, especially with McCoy's injury. The, the Eagles are not going to put him in that situation when he comes back. Yeah, and yeah. published reports that McCoy is out indefinitely, so we oh, have to watch that situation. That's a, that's a month situation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, moving on. Oh, Ryan Terrain of the Washington Redskins. I uh, Last week I uh, <laughs> definitely had some problems with the Redskins running backs, but it seems like Terrain Terrain had some nice bursts against the Eagles. Yeah, Terrain, Terrain was not only nice bursts, but the thing that impressed me the most about Terrain was the physical play, the ability to lower the shoulder and break tackles. And that could also lead to injury, 
So you have to be a little <laughs> bit concerned. But I really like Ryan Terrain's upside. Yes, he definitely does have a good upside, and he has a history with Mike Shanahan. So they, which means you can get pulled at any time. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. That's yeah. for sure with Shanny and uh, Legarrette Blunt. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are now back. They had a bye week last week, and Blunt Raheem Morris says that Blunt will be more involved in the offense. Yeah, um, you know Cadillac Williams is mediocre. You don't know what you're going to get from Kareem Huggins, but. You know, if he's going to get the opportunity, how much he produces, I don't know. You know, I'm not a big fan of that Tampa Bay offense. But LeGarrette Blunt, he had, he pretty much had second-round talent until his temper got the best of him. So uh, he, he definitely, at the end of the day, he can end up being a very productive back in this league. Okay, moving on to wide receiver. Yes, wide receiver, Devon Best, nine catches against the New England Patriots, and he's a, he has value in PPR leagues. In PPR leagues, yeah, but he reminds me more of a Bobby Ingram. He's very rarely going to score. I mean, I know Brandon Marshall's getting the attention, but after team watch film of Monday Night Football, they're going to know that they're going to have to respect Bess more. Brandon Marshall's getting double teamed and bracketed, but, uh, you know, uh, in a PPR league, yeah, but I don't think the consistency is going to be there. Mm, no, I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Like in deep leagues, he can definitely help in deep leagues, you think? Uh, in deep leagues, yeah, you know, 14 teams or more, yeah. Okay. And, oh, Aurelius Ben, another player that um, Raheem Morris wants to get more involved. And he could be, could be the most naturally gifted receiver on that team. Yeah, but you know what? I just don't think he's ready at the NFL level uh to really produce anything just yet. The talent, the upside is there, but uh, opportunity doesn't always lead to production. I'm going to disagree with you on this one. I've, you know, I I think there are about 50 guys I'd rather pick up before really is Ben. <laughs> but I, I have to say, Ben Ben showed definitely the talent in Illinois, the route running skills, and, and it's just about getting... We're not in to... Illinois. We're <laughs> but, in the NFL. <laughs> the second round, he was a second round pick. So. I know, so you know, two years from now, I'll agree with you on this, yeah. But, uh, but also, Greg Camarillo with the Vikings back from a bye week. Brett Favre and him seem to have some type of connection. And also PPR Been there, leagues. PPR done leagues. that. Been yes, there, bad. done that. Picked up Camarillo a few weeks ago. He did nothing. The chemistry is not there. I'm not seeing it. I don't but want Camarillo. there was Camarillo. a bye week. There was a bye week. Yeah. Okay, you know, he <laughs> likes Camarillo Allen, he likes Ben, and, I don't. And they didn't we're, give him we're, we're glad we're helping you make clear decisions here. Yeah. <laughs> and now the tight end position, Heath Miller with Big Ben coming back. Got to agree with you there. I mean, the numbers weren't there. Some people might cut him if your players in your league are unexperienced. Who else do you like? Oh, I like uh, Jermaine Grissom, Grissom as well for the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, Rookie. he's he's a red zone target. And that, that, that about wraps it up here for the waiver pickups for week five. I'm Scott Engel with Nabate Isles. You can check us out every week, and I'll be back later this week with the Royal Tips for week five. You'll see me with my crown. Scott Engel for Nabate Isles. Thanks a lot. We'll see you again next week.